Section 7.3, example 6. So we have one more example of a hyperbola. Um, we want to find the equation of a hyperbola with vertices 2, 0 and 2, negative 6. And then we also know the hyperbola passes through 10, 2. So let's start with the vertices. Um, I like to sketch a graph because it just helps me figure out what's going on. So we're going to go to 2, 0 and we'll go to 2, negative 6. So this tells me it's vertical. It also tells me the center is not 0, 0, which makes it more work. But we can still do this. So we're going to have a vertical hyperbola because my vertices go up and down. So it looks something like that. It'll go up at 2, 0 and down at 2, negative 2. Um, I also know that the center is exactly in between the two vertices. So rather than using formulas and overwhelming myself and messing up formulas, I'm just going to count. So this is 0, and this is negative 6. So halfway in between would be negative 3. So the center would be 2, negative 3. I highly recommend just graphing and counting. There's so many formulas. There's so many H's and K's and A's and B's. And you're going to get really overwhelmed with these formulas. Um, I teach math and I don't even know all these formulas. I know this more from counting. Um, so let's see. Let's set up the general formula for the hyperbola. hyperbola. We at least need that equation. So since it's vertical, y comes first. So we have y minus k, y minus k squared over a squared. You can hear my dog shaking in the background. Um, and then we do minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. So we need to figure out all these values. We know h and k because we know the center. So that's good. We just need to find a and b. So it's a little bit backwards thinking now. So we learned that a is the distance. If we go from the center, a is the distance to the vertices. So again, I'm trying to do this without formulas because the formulas, there's so many and we might mix and match horizontal and vertical. So A is the distance between the foci, the vertices and center. So again, I'm just going to count. It's so much easier. Formulas are overwhelming. So it's just one, two, three, one, two, three. So A is three. If you're trying to use a formula, I think you'll be convinced that this is easier. So let's plug in what we know, and then maybe we'll figure out how to find b. The problem with b is b is counting to the left and right here, and we just don't have any information. So we have y, and it'll be plus 3 for minus negative 3 squared over a squared, which is 9. So y plus 3 squared over 9. And then we get x minus 2 squared, because h is 2, over b squared equals 1. And so the final thing we know is we know a point on the curve. We know that the curve goes through 10, negative 2. 10, 2. So we'll just pretend. If this were to scale, it, would it looks like it's probably way wider than I drew it. So that 10, 2 shows up on it. So 10 and 2. So we can use that to actually solve for b. So what we're going to do is we have 10, 2. We'll plug in 10 for x. We'll plug in 2 for y. And then we can solve for b. So we get y is 2. So we get 2 plus 3 squared over 9. We get x is 10. So we get minus 10 minus 2 squared over b squared equals 1. And then we'll solve for b. So I think the hardest part here is there's no like one direct route, right? It's a little bit of guess and check and just getting familiar with formulas. Um, and you might not necessarily do this the correct way in the beginning. But if you make a mess, just start over. But let's see where this takes us. So we get 5 squared. We get 25 over 9 minus 8 squared or 64 over b squared equals 1. So I don't, I'm going to multiply by 9b squared to get rid of the denominator. So 
So 9b squared, we get 9b squared times 25 over 9, so that's 25b squared. The 9 cancels out. Um, with the second term, the b squared cancel out, so we get 64 times 9, which we'll find in a second. And then we get equals 9b squared. So 64 times 9, I have no idea, 576. So 25b squared minus 576 equals 9b squared. So let's just do some quick algebra. Plus 576 plus 576 and then minus 9b squared minus 9b squared. So 25 minus 9 gives me 16. B squared equals 576, and then we'll divide by 16. Hopefully this is a nice number. And it's 36, so that ugly mess is 36. So B is just 6. So just isolating B squared, and then we don't, yeah. And then, so B is 6, and so we can just plug into this equation. So our... Equation for I hyperbola is y plus 3 squared over 9 minus x minus 2 over 36. And that x minus 2 is squared equals 1. And that's what's making it so wide, is that the x's are going out farther. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if we were to do that ox box, it's really wide. So we have really like... Um, our asymptotes are really slow growing, which is what makes this so wide. But that wasn't part of the question. So that's our equation of our hyperbola. So this section just takes practice. Um, I highly recommend the ox box. Um, completing the square might need some practice. That's a really important skill. Um, and these are really important graphs in Calculus 3. So let me know if you have any questions.